A great God, we thank you at this time. Lord, we bless your name because we know you are a great God. And we know you are a mighty God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you did before, you are still able to do today. And Lord, we pray as we come today looking at the scriptures again. We pray, Lord, Jericho walls will fall in Jesus' name. Every barrier to the promised land. Whatever is standing between us and a land of fruitfulness. And a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And a land of the fulfillment of the promise of God. All those barriers. All those walls of partition. Everything will come down in our lives and ministries in Jesus name. We are asking, oh Lord, whatever it will take on earth, whatever it will take from our own heart, whatever it will take from our response to your word, that we'll be able to draw your power from heaven and destroy and pull down every stronghold that is trying to keep us from the promises. Lord, you'll do everything. Whatever it takes on our part. Whatever it takes on the part of the church. Whatever it takes on the part of the leadership. Whatever it takes on the part of all the priests. Of all the sectional leaders. Of all the overseers. Of all the pastors. Whatever it will take. Of all the participants in the leadership strategy congress. That the walls of Jericho may come down. Oh Lord, do it in Jesus name. Amen. That's our goal. Our ambition. Our desire. Our dream. Will be to see the walls coming down. Amen. And whatever little, little things we're holding on to. That will not allow you to move. To blow the walls off our way. And to pull the strong holes down. Whatever it is anyone is holding on to. That will make the world to keep on standing. Lord we pray you take it away from us. Amen. That this day will see your power. Amen. This day will see your glory. Amen. And this day as a body together. We'll move on into the promised land. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're coming to another study of Joshua. And this is Joshua chapter 6. And you have to be in 5 before you come to 6. You know, many times, many people just jump into Joshua chapter 6. And they say, we come, we're going to blow the walls down. We're going to pull the walls down. Yes, we can. But if we overlook chapter 5, the circumcision, the cutting off of the first skin of the heart, the removal of the stiff neck, then you cannot jump, just jump into chapter 6. There will be a great disappointment. But when we allow the Lord to work in a consistent way in our lives. And the study and the lesson and the teaching and the statute of yesterday is not forgotten today. Thinking that there is going to be a new thing without going through. What you've had in chapter 5. There's going to be a great disappointment if you don't allow chapter 5 to take its effect in your life. But now, as that is done, and it's a circumcision, and the stiff neck is gone, and the stubbornness is gone, and the rebellion against the word of God is gone, and the disobedience against the Thus says the Lord, that's gone. Then we move into chapter 6. We're coming to chapter 6. I said we're coming to chapter 6. Now in chapter 6, verse 1. 
Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Obviously, they were afraid of the children of Israel. You know something? They just got circumcised in chapter 5. At that time of circumcision, they were weak. They had sore. They couldn't, they couldn't try up. They were all lying down. All those men of war. And if these people of Jericho had come after them, they would have killed all of them. But even though they were weak, even though they had the sores, and even though it appeared, they couldn't fight at that time. At the time, they could not fight because they were in obedience to the Lord. The enemies were still afraid of them. The enemies were afraid of them. And do you know how many people were circumcised in chapter, in chapter 5? Everybody except Joshua and Caleb. What's the implication of that? The priests were, they were circumcised. The priests that will bear the ark. And go before the people. They were circumcised. They were having the sores. Not only that. All those officers. They were also circumcised. And they were having the sores. And then the general chief of the people. The priests. The officers. And the people. Everyone circumcised. And they were lying down there. And at that time. Even though. Everybody was circumcised and you will think they have weakened the church. They have weakened the people. They have weakened all the men of war and the priests carrying the ark and everybody see this kind of message. This, see this kind of instruction. A kind of message that weakens everybody. And everybody is circumcised and we cannot rise up and we cannot go and fight. Yes, it's out of that weakness strength will come. Out of the weakness of circumcision is when the victory of the conqueror will come. And so now we see the fainting. We see the dread. And we see the trembling. We see the terror. In the mind, in the hearts of those people. Because of them, Jericho was strictly shut up. Because of the children of Israel. None went out. The presence of the children of Israel on their side, Jordan. Weakened them, restricted them, restrained them. They couldn't come out and they couldn't, nobody could come in. They shut all the gates. And do you think the shutting of the gates will hinder the power of God from moving? No. You know those nations, that's what they think. All those cities, that's what they think. They have heard about an army of the people of God coming in. Evangelizing, winning souls. Carrying on the great commission. And they say, not here. Not here. It will not happen. That's what they say. But it will happen. Yeah. We're going to all those cities that are shut up. We're going to all those places that are shut up. We're going to all those villages that are shut up. We're going to all those countries that are shut up. We're reaching there. We're moving there. We're getting there. It's going to be done. Even though they shut up all the doors and all the gates and the walls were high. Yet that will not hinder the almighty God from blowing down every barrier, every hindrance, every stronghold. And before us after this conference, after this congress, every wall will come down. Every barrier will come down. Every difficulty between us. And the promised land, everything will come down and crumble in Jesus' name. But the principles of victory, the principles of victory through obedience and faith. Through obedience and faith. The principle or principles of victory through obedience and faith. If we're going to have the victory. We need faith. And if we're going to manifest faith 
unhindered, unrestrained, unlimited. We need obedience. Without obedience, there is no true faith. It is the obedience and the faith joined together that will give us the victory that God has preserved for us. You will have it. We divide the message to three parts. Number one, promise of faith and command with assurance. Promise of faith and command with assurance. When the Lord gives a promise and then he backs it up with a command, it's with assurance that if you will do what he's calling you to do, if you will rise up and carry out what the Lord is calling upon you to carry out, there is that command, but it's with the assurance that this God of heaven will not fail and can never fail. The promise of faith and the command that comes with assurance. Joshua again, chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 2. Joshua chapter 6. Verse 2, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. See the promise of God. He had given a general promise before every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, and as I was with him, so will I be with you. It given the general promise before. And then he said, This is the territory from this place to that place, from this place to that place. He drew the perimeter, the territory of the land. They were to possess. But now this is specific. There's a general promise. There is a specific promise. It says in verse 2, The Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. Jericho in particular. This is specific. As you look at your life, and the Lord gives you the great commission. It's a broad commission. It's a wide commission. It's a great commission. As you look at the extent of the work, all the villages, all the cities, all the towns, all the people, all the sections of society, all the communities, is a broad, great, general commission. Going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How general, how great. And then go to this nation for the nation of Israel and tell the lost that the lost, they are to be saved. It's a great commission for a nation. But then the specifics. When the Lord points out a particular city, a particular Jericho, a particular community, and he says, this is what to do. And then you rise up, you say, yes, the general, but now the specific pinpointed. That he says, the Lord said unto him, unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho in particular, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. In verse 3, ye shall compass the city. Here is the command now. We've seen the promise. Now we want to see the command. You see, every promise has attached to it a command. Every promise has a command attached to it. Yes, God says, I'm giving you a promise. This is what I will do. And then he says, this is what you must do. To move the hand that holds the universe. This is what you must do. And to make active. That spiritual divine energy. This is what you must do. Every promise has a command, a condition attached to it. And it's what we find here. And you see many people, they don't understand. They just think it's promise, promise, promise. I about the condition. I about the commandment. I about the things we're supposed to carry out. As a result of that promise. And so we read in verse 3. And ye shall come past the city. All ye men of war. And go round about the city. Once. 
and thou shalt thus shalt thou do six days and it said and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seven and on the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow with the trumpets and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet all ye all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat the walls will fall down flat the barriers will fall down flat all the strongholds will fall down flat and then it says and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him do you know we're going in do you know we're going to possess because when the walls come down then it's time it's time to rise and move on and possess possessing the land now the principles what principles do we have here the lord gives a promise he backs it up with his power and then he gives us the condition what what you do and he says this command we must follow through look at this uh, this uh, this city jericho walled city what was the thing that hindered them originally from moving in what report did those ten spies give when they went to search out the land what did they say that terrified the children of israel that they said we cannot go in the people have discouraged our hearts they spoke about the, the stature of the people there they also spoke about the walls of those cities let's look at numbers chapter 13 numbers chapter 13 they had come back and now here is the report part of the report that they gave they said in verse 28 numbers chapter 13 verse 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled that was the problem and the cities are walled and very great moreover we saw the children of anak there that was the thing that terrified them that was the thing that bothered them that was the thing that put fear trembling in their hearts that was the thing that made them say no we cannot make it no we cannot do it no it's not possible for us to move in that's what is qualified and destroyed the old the old generation that's why the old generation said no we cannot it's impossible look at the cities the cities are walled in fact uh, they exaggerated it uh, look at deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28 deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28 whither shall we go up our brethren have discouraged your heart saying the people is greater and taller than we they looked at their stature and they said this is terrible what kind of land are we trying to possess the people you know they didn't say the people are they just bound them together they just united them together and they just got them and they said the people is that no weak one among them there's no short one among them they're all tall and what you see of a is what you see of b what you see of x is what you see of y what you see of the first is what you see of the last the last of them everyone tall and they're all strong and they're all mighty they're unconquerable who is telling us to go to such a land you know sometimes if you're called to go to a place and then you begin to make your research and you begin to get information and you begin to investigate that this is the place you are to go. A city you are to go. A village you are to go. A town you are to go. A region you are appointed to go. Or a nation you are appointed to go. 
And then you begin to make your investigation. And you begin to find everything you have in yourself. You have the opposite on the other side. You are not as intelligent. They are very intelligent. You are weak and they are strong. You are short and they are tall. You are inexperienced and they are experienced in warfare. Everything you see yourself, you see the opposite on the other side. And you say, this I cannot do. This I will not be able to confront. And that was their problem. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. And they saw these people as giants. And they were saying, how can you send a rat against an elephant? How can you send a dwarf against a giant? How can you send the child against a mighty warrior? How can you send people who, have, who are not experienced in warfare against the people that are very forceful and fierce? And the people that just a step of their iron boot, they destroy us. That was their fear. But the Lord is saying, no matter how tall the enemies are, they will come down. No matter how high the enemies are, they will come down. And so you find in this verse 28 of Deuteronomy chapter 1, they said the people, the people that we saw there, the people is great, is greater and higher and taller than we. And the cities are great and walled up to heaven. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. They said, when, when you get near those cities and you look like this and you're looking at the walls, you cannot see the edge of the walls. It's like the top of the wall is reaching the sky. And when the wall stops, is where the sky has the limit. That's what they thought. It was so high. That they thought the cities are walled up to heaven, up to the sky. Those people, their technology, so great. Can you imagine that we have the people on this earth, at this early stage, we thought Egypt was developed and we thought Egypt was, circum was civilized. But getting to those people, we never saw wars like that before, not even in Egypt. The engineering there is tremendous, fantastic, and also terrifying. Their walls are up to heaven. And then it says, and it, when it said the walls are up to man, moreover, we have, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. We read about them in our history books and we know that those people nobody ever conquered them and we saw them there and then they said because of that it will be impossible to reach out to them but today we're learning it is possible what you thought was impossible before is possible what our fathers thought was impossible before is possible what terrified and hindered those of the generations of the past Today is going to be possible. The Lord is giving us the promise and we're going to hold on to the promise. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. Rise ye up and take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon and the Amorite. The Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land begin to possess it. This year the Lord is saying, begin to possess. Possess the land for Christ. Possess the land in salvation. Preach the word of God to them. Don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their attitude. Don't be afraid of their actions. Begin to possess. And then in that verse 24, it says, And contend with them in battle. Don't look at their height. And don't look at their stature. And don't look at the walls that are great and up to heaven. Begin to possess and begin to battle war with them in Psalm 2. Psalm 2. I'm reading from verse 8. We're going to possess. In Psalm 2 verse 8, ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Begin to possess. This year is a year of possession. 
Souls are going to be saved. Cities are going to be won for the Lord. Villages are going to be conquered for the Lord and brought to the Lord. Countries that have closed up and they have their walls all around them. And the missionaries have been afraid. Not only missionaries here, missionaries all over Christian organizations. They have been afraid to go into those lands. This year, we're going to those closed places. All those closed doors. All the places where the people thought, nobody can evangelize here. Nobody can do any, bis any, any Christian work here. Nobody can do any soul winning work here. We're going to those places. And if, it, if the announcement comes to you that you are the one to go in the forefront and then we'll be coming behind you so that we can possess those lands, you'll not say, uh, me, can I do that? You will do it. Everything the Lord calls you to this year, you will do, you will accomplish and possess in Jesus' name. The secret is to ask him on behalf of Christ. The secret is to demand it on behalf of Christ. The secret is to tell the Lord that this is the very first week of the year. And the year is declared the year of possession. We're going to possess Jericho. And we're going to possess Ai. And all those cities of the land were going to possess everything. The time of possession has come. And the Lord is telling us now about this possession. The, 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 the rest of a fight. They will try to close the door. They will try to make build their walls. They'll try to strengthen the barrier. Don't come in here. This is not your territory. They'll try to terrify you. They'll try to intimidate you. And then when you see their walls, when you see their stature, and when you see their accomplishment, and when you see what they have done or what they're still doing, it will try to intimidate you. If you allow it, but this year there is no fear. This year there is no intimidation. Where the Lord sends us, there we will go. And what the Lord sends us to do that, we will do. Look at these people in chapter 2. Chapter 2 of the Psalms from verse 1. Why do the heathens rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Why do the people rage? All the same, ask of me. And I will give thee the heathen. The heathen, they are raging. They are closing their door. And they are banging the door. And they are strengthening their walls. And they are raising it very high. Why do the heathen rage? All the same as cup me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Against his anointed. All the same as cup me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Don't worry about the conspiracy of those kings, about the shutting of the door, about the building of the walls, about the straining of their gates. In verse 3, this is what they are saying Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We don't want them here. Cast away their cords from us. Push away their doctrines from us. Let us, let us push them away. By all means, we know all the same as cup me. Don't worry about them. Ask of me. And I shall give them the heathen for their inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for their possession. In verse 4, he that sitteth in the heavens shall lie. All those heathens, while they are planning together, the men of God will not come here. All those uh, warriors restored by the Lord, they will not get here. And they are consulting together. He that sitteth in the heavens shall love, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. 
God says the final decision is in my hand. God says the final outcome is in my hand. Yet with all the conspiracy of those kings. Yet with all the problems that those people may raise up and Jericho may be shut up. Yet have I set my king on my holy hill Zion. That's why you ask of him. And then he said, I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. I will declare the decree. There is a decree. We will possess the land. There is a decree. All those kings, they will be surprised. They said, we are not coming, but we are coming. They said they have shut the gate, but the gate is going to be thrown wide open. And he said the walls are so high there is no ladder from the children of Israel that will be able to climb. We don't need a ladder. All we need is a shout of faith, a shout of praise, a shout of worship and the walls will come down. What do we need the ladders for? And what do we need all those gadgets for? When we have the power of faith working on our side. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, they, thou art my son here is Christ saying thou art my son this day have I begotten thee therefore ask of me I were representing Christ we are the body of Christ ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen now where you came from if you are a missionary think about that whole nation and the Lord is saying ask of me if you're an overseer, look at that community. Look at that, at that stage. Look at that region. And there are some places you have never covered since you became a, a state overseer. A region overseer there. How many cities are there? How many towns are there? How many villages are there? Hundred? Have you covered up to twenty? I'm not asking whether there are churches there. I'm saying, have you gone there? Have you put your feet there? Have you watched there? Have you planned programs there? Have you done soul winning there? Have you had crusades there? There are 365 days in the year. And if you went to a village and you spent only two days, in 60 days, you will cover 30 villages. And the 30 days don't have to be all together. Two days this week. Two days, another week, maybe two weeks after. Another two, three days, about two weeks after. And if you scatter them like that, you'll still have all your regular programs in your local church, where you are resident, where you are actually doing the work. And you can scatter all that through. And then when you go on like that, you can evangelize. And you can also get some workers with you. If you have about, if you have about 1,000 people in the state, I mean workers, or maybe let's even say 500, and you divided them into 10, 10, 10, 10, you can tell those 10 workers, we're going to this village these two, three days. Would you take a permission from your place of work? I'm going along with you. You are going along with me. And then the next two weeks, you want to go to another place. You pick another 10 workers and they go with you. And like that, you can reach all those territories and all those villages and all those cities and all those places where people are. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen. It is when you're asking the Lord where your prayer is, that's where your performance, your activity will be. If you're not praying about evangelism, if you're not praying about reaching out to those souls, you're not going to plan anything. It's prayer that generates the planning. You've been praying about the cities, about the villages, about the local governments, about the people. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen. And as a result of that praying, you begin to visualize, envision the things that will be done. 
I begin to say, this January, dry season, there's something I can do. This February, dry season, something I can do. This March, dry season before the Easter retreat, there's something I can do. Even April, after the Easter retreat, the Easter retreat is earlier in April. After the Easter retreat, we can still do something. I may, when the, when the rains are just touching, there's something we can do. It's planning. And then, during the rainy season, where well, you cannot have an open air meeting then you do consolidation then you'll be good you still travel you still go to those churches but now indoor meetings during the rainy season and then when you have the august break we have some allowance and some and some space now there'll be no rain during this august break then we can do some outside job outside evangelism then september comes and october rainy season again you do some consolidation november and december dry months that he is no rain. It's when you pray. Then you plan. Then you have programs. Crusades. Evangelistic outings. And when that is done, then you match your planning with your prayer. And then we'll be able to take Jericho. I said we'll take Jericho. And all the cities in that community will take them as cop me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Will you possess? Yes, yes we will. We're coming to point number two. The principles of faith and confidence in the Almighty. The principles of faith and confidence in the Almighty. We're looking at Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. We're reading from verse 6 now. 6 to 16. Joshua chapter 6 verse 6. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the lord here comes now the principles because joshua believed what the lord had said yes he had seen the walls too yes he had viewed the challenges too yes he had seen the tall giants too yes he had seen those ferocious fierce people too yes he had seen the obstacles too but he believed in his god and because of that faith, faith led him into action. The Lord had told him exactly what to do. Faith without works is dead. Faith without action is dead. Faith without activity is dead. Faith without the practice of the word of God. Obedience to the word of God is dead. And so he knew. If the walls are going to come down, then we must put our faith into action. It tells us in verse 8, and, and it came to pass. In this chapter 6, verse 8, when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven prophet, uh, trumpets of Ram's horn passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets. And the rear ward came after the ark. And the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people. Joshua, there's a the word again. Joshua had commanded the people. You know, when you go through Joshua, you'll see the reason they, they had the victory is that Joshua was not afraid to speak to the priests. He was never apologetic, Joshua. That's why he had such a great victory. Never apologetic. Never saying, sorry, brethren. I know that you just went through the circumcision. And thank you very much for, you know, that obedience. I never thought that me, little me, unqualified me 
just one of you know one of the least in this land i never thought that you people will be so quick and that you'll be so prompt in listening to me and doing what i said to do even though it was painful now you've just finished the circumcision and now you are made whole but would you mind if i told you the next thing the lord wants us to go to jericho and if you don't mind you know joshua never spoke like that i'm trying to learn the language of scripture and you know those of us who are leaders try to learn the language of scripture yes be gentle yes be kind yes be loving yes be a father be a father my child if you don't mind can you get me a cup of water there how can a father talk to a child like that my child i need a bible my bible from that shelf if you don't mind can you get up and give me that how can a father talk like that to the children hey boy i need a bible there stand up and go and pick it praise the lord that's how fathers talk. That's how pastors talk. That's how I talk. And you are my children. Yes. And when I talk like that, my boy never gets offended. Jerry, stand up. Go and pick it, that thing there and bring it to me. He doesn't get offended. How can you be offended? I'm your father in the Lord. And I said, this is what to do. How can you be offended? It's your father. And you have only one father here. You have senior brothers and senior sisters. You have teachers. But you have one father here. And so when Joshua spoke to them, here is the way he addressed them. And here is what he told them. And thank God, this generation of the children of Israel, this is how they responded in verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. Have you noticed how difficult it is to hold on for a whole day? And not to allow any word to come out of your mouth. And then we're under restriction. And we're compelled. And we're commanded. We're not supposed to talk any word out of your mouth. Until the day I bid you shout. What a great command that was. But all those children of Israel, in the millions, that's exactly what they did. And this is the principle of faith. The obedience of faith. Faith is not just something you think about. Faith is demonstrated in the obedience. In Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Romans chapter 1. We're looking at verse 5. Obedience in connection with faith. In Romans chapter 1 verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Obedience to the faith. You see, when the faith is there, it will be demonstrated. It will be revealed by obedience. It tells us in Romans chapter 16 verse 26 Romans chapter 16 verse 26 but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all the nations to the obedience of faith to the obedience of faith there is no faith if there is no obedience the obedience of faith is the action of faith. The obedience of faith is the principle that gives the faith power, authority, a dynamite to the obedience of faith. We're told in Acts of the Apostles, chapter, chapter 6, verse 7. Acts, chapter 6, verse 7. 
and the word of God increased. And the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Yes, the faith, that is, all the things they learned. The body of the tenets of faith. The teachings, the doctrines. They had faith in them. They were obedient to the faith. But then, also, if you really have faith... There's going to be that obedience, the carrying out of the word of God. You not just sit down there thinking, should I, should I not? Faith will not work in your life. Faith will not operate in your life. If there is no obedience, if there's no response, an action that corresponds to the commandment were given except there is that obedience obedience is so very important if we're going to be able to manifest faith obedience in deuteronomy chapter 13 deuteronomy chapter 13 to obey to obey and that's what actually quickens our faith that makes our, that's what makes our faith dynamic that's what makes it work. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and obey his voice. Look at these children of Israel by the walls of Jericho. And the Lord told them and that would have been something like almost an impossible task. To tell this whole congregation, no words out of your mouth this day. Just go around the walls. See how large we are, men and women here. If we were to just test ourselves, just say test, and say now, everybody, leaders, pastors, overseers, will get up only for one hour. I will walk around the walls of this. We are not going to destroy these walls. But we want to walk around just, just to possess the land. And for the people around to see who are those people. The mighty army of the Lord. They want to possess that village. That village. That village there. That territory there. And then we say no talk. No shout. Nothing. That will rise up and move around. One hour. Nobody saying anything. What a command to obey. What a word to obey. There will be people. Who have not gone through the circumcision of chapter 5. They know about the circumcision of chapter 5. But they have not done it. They know about. The taking away. Of the stiff neck. But they have not done it. There will be people that will say, they have said their own. Me? How, how can somebody say for one whole hour? Nobody talking. I'm going, to, I'm going to be the first person that will do the talking. And then I will release the other people to, 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 to do the talking. Stiff neck. Just this congregation. Have you noticed sometimes we'll come in here and we'll say whatever you need just about six days five days don't go out there to buy anything we have all heard and then giants preachers coordinators group coordinators great great forceful such the scripture teachers in the region they heard they'll go there and as they're coming back, and one of our people said, oh, brother, but this, who are you talking to me? You know who I am? I mean, pastor, if you don't know, you people that are called from Lagos to come and, they, they told you to come and clean the compound. And then they told you to just, and you're talking to me. Don't go, who are you? There we are. And the fellow you are talking to say, I'm sorry, sir. But the fellow you are talking to, he is hearing the word. Because those people outside the gates, they, although they just come to clean the compound, they are hearing. They say, these are the people the GS is talking about. They come from the states. 
and we just say, sir, did you hear they say we should not, and he was shouting on me. Did you see him? But thank God, I manifested more humility than this giant. I manifested sanctification. I controlled my, I said, sorry, sir. And then he was, you know, he said, all right, don't do that next time to me. <laughs> it's what we are talking about. The circumcision of heart. That the Lord will take us and then the faith we say we have will manifest obedience and the carnality will no more be there and the stiff neck will no more be there. We'll be able to say praise the Lord. I've gone through the circumcision of chapter 5 and now chapter 6 it will be so easy for a word not to come out of my mouth until the man of God will say now you are released. Give a shout to the Lord and then our walls will come down. I said our walls will come down. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. I'm reading from verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go at other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams. He says, don't allow negative influence. You've heard the word. The word has come out from the central pulpit here. The word of circumcision. The word of sanctification. The word of holiness. And the word of moving in to possess the land. There may be somebody around you that will tell you that you are not to do that. Wrong influence. Negative influence. And will say don't obey the word of God. Don't abide by the doctrine, by the teaching. Don't abide by the humility in our mind, in our life, in our lifestyle. And it's a wrong influence if you are born again, if you are a child of God, if you are a true son. And a true leader, it says, you will not hack in to their voice. You know what's right. You know what the Bible demands. And it says in that verse 3, you will, thou shalt not hack in unto the words of that prophet, or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death. Count him as dead. This one is dead spiritually. How will I allow a dead man, a dead lady to control me? It says, you'll put him to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or the husband whom you love very well, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou, nor thy fathers, namely, of the gods of the people, which are round about you, nice unto thee, or far off from thee, from one end, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him. 
You see this kind of obedience? That once you hear the word from your Joshua, from your general superintendent, from your leader, from your pastor, from your father in the Lord, once you hear the word, if another person comes, a trusted friend, a relative, a member of the family, or just a colleague, another leader like yourself, if that person comes and he says, what do you see to these things they are saying? All these words they are preaching. All these exhortations they are giving. What do you see to it? Please, go your way. Don't disturb me. Accept everything. The sweet and the bitter. The easy and the difficult. I accept everything. If you have a problem, please go your way. Don't disturb my mind. Send them away from you. I said it should send them away from you. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him. Neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. Obedience, obedience to the word. And you know, obedience to the word is what preserves us in the victory of salvation. Hebrews chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. This is how the victory comes in Genesis Chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 18. Genesis, chapter 22, verse 18. In this, and, this, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because, notice that word, because. The promise will be definite and sure. The miracle will be undeniable. Because of obedience. Because, in verse 18, thou hast obeyed my voice. If you want the Jericho walls to come down, it comes down by the obedience of faith. If you want the mighty things to be done, and for the people of God to march in and possess the land, that is going to take place by the obedience of faith. And by you taking a decision, yes, Lord, I have faith in you. And the faith is not just an idea flowing in your mind or running in your head. It's the obedience, it's the action that determines and demonstrates the faith. The obedience of faith. We're going to do it. The Lord has all the power to carry out and to fulfill all his promises. When we obey him, when we stand true to the word that he has given us, and we say, the Lord has said so, and we don't have any other contrary idea, he said, this is what you do, and that is what will be done. I said, that is what will be done. We come now to point number three. Number one is the promise of faith. And command with assurance. Number two, the principles of faith and confidence in the Almighty. Now, number three, the power of faith and courage of the assembly. The power of faith and the courage of the assembly. In Joshua chapter 6, Joshua chapter 6, we're reading from verse 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning. And the priest took up the ark of the Lord. See their response. See this Joshua. Never tired. Always rising up early in the morning. No procrastination. I'll think about it. No. The Lord has spoken. And the people of God must act. And it's the leader that shows that first. He leads the way. The action of the leader is a leading action. The behavior of the leader is a leading behavior. The attitude of the leader is a, is a leading attitude. And of course, if the leader says 
The sin of the leader is a leading sin. If a leader obeys, the obedience of the leader is a leading obedience. Because what that leader does, that's what everybody will do. When Joshua rose up in the morning, who will just be sleeping and still lying down, waiting behind? Joshua is up. Joshua is ready and Joshua is moving on. He, he knows that the Jericho walls are coming down and is up and doing. And then because of that, that action will lead the rest of the people into real positive, definite, a forward journey, action. Verse 12 again. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them but the rear what came after the ark of the lord the priests going on blowing with the trumpets nobody left himself out nobody went to stay somewhere if these people do not know that when he dressed, I need dressed, let them keep on going. Everybody has his own constitution. Everybody has his own manner and method of doing things. If that is the new style, if that is the new way to possess the land, let them go and possess. When they finish possessing, whatever part remains, let them give to me. And I don't mind. I'm going to live an easy life. Come on now, rise up and get joined together with the people of God. One mind, one goal, one spirit, one attitude, unity in everything. All of them just team together. We're marching on. Joshua is moving forward. We're marching after him. And the priests, those who bore the ark, carrying the ark, and those that were to blow with the trumpet, they were all ready. And it was a united force. No wonder they won and we're going to win. Amen. Verse 14, on the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early. They rose early. They rose early. On the seventh day, you know, sometimes we, uh, sometimes I want to get in touch uh, with uh, some of our leaders, and uh, then we phone the office at 11 o'clock. And I say, Can I talk to, you know, the overseer there? Oh, and somebody answers in the office and says, Sir, the overseer has not come. I say, When will he come? Or they say, we don't know. Can you call back, sir, at one o'clock in the afternoon? I say, it, generally, is that how your pastor, is that the time he comes? Or they say, eh, sir, no definite time, but at least at, at one you can try again. If not, you might try at three o'clock again. Can you find a pastor over a church? No time. To be with the workers. To direct them. We come there early in the morning. All the workers. And the people are not there. The administrator is not there. Admin officer is not there. And we don't know what we are going to do for the day. And we just do whatever we think we can do. Early in the morning. And then sometimes you go to a church on Sunday and we're starting Sunday scripture early in the morning. The pastor is not there. And the Sunday scripture is going on already. The choir is singing already. Everything is going on already. And then somebody will take the phone and phone the pastor and say, Pastor, Bible reading is coming on. I'm coming. If you don't find me time after the Bible reading, don't let the choir sing. Let them pray. And they do it in a way, in a very good way. Get the people. You know, to, you know what I mean. Do it very well. 
And don't allow them to know that there's something that is missing. That you will delay everything for me until I come. Delay the moving of the Spirit of God for me until I come. And then as eventually, then it will phone when he's somewhere there. Now you can end up the prayer, release the choir. I'm now at the gate. I'm almost there. What? It's not how to possess the land. It's not how to do the work of God. What are we doing? And sometimes it happens to the coordinator or the group coordinator. That is not there. You know, sometimes you cannot, uh, you cannot really copy everything I do. You know, some people say there are times that, you know, the pastor comes late to the Bible. So you don't understand. I finish the Monday Bible study and then I jump in the plane and I go somewhere. On Tuesday, I start preaching. I finish there on maybe on on saturday and then i come or maybe i finish my crusade sunday night and then monday morning i wake up at four o'clock to be able to drive in some countries to the airport 4 a.m in the morning and then after that i get to the plane one plane and then i get to another place i take two planes before i get to lagos and then the plane arrives at 5 30 at the airport and they have to check the load and then the, they say you must not carry, you know, nowadays you cannot carry even toothpaste in your hand luggage. You put it in, a, you know, in, in, a, in your load that you check in. And we have to wait for that load. And if the load comes out at 10 minutes to 6, and then I carry that. And the, the crosses, they're starting at 6 o'clock. And I'm at the airport. That's different from somebody who is in the house. And then I come in 25 after 6, I'm just coming in. And you say, well, the GS2, you cannot compare. You don't understand. But you see, this is what people do. And they cannot rest early in the morning and do their work. Things will change. Yeah. I said, things will change. Yeah. You see, in the way I do it, I'm early. I do everything I need to do. And sometimes, you know, if you are watching me, you know, I was here before 6 o'clock this morning. If I didn't want to sit here, I might sit in the office and you'll not know I'm there. And you say, okay, since the GS is not there, why should I be there? How old are you? How old am I? How strong are you? How strong am I? What activities do you have? What activities do I have? Early in the morning, what will change? We come to Joshua. We're still in Joshua. This Joshua is very interesting. Is it interesting? Everybody say yes. Give me a good yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, some people want, uh, you know, some doctrinal preaching that will be so high. And then when we get all those high, high things, it doesn't cure our procrastination. You know, but these little, little things, when to get to the Bible study, when to get to the service, and when to do everything we ought to do, that's what gives us the victory. And that's why this year is a year of victory for us. In Joshua chapter 6, we're looking at this third point, the power of faith and the courage in the, of the assembly. In Joshua chapter 6, we're reading up verse 15, and, and it came to pass on the, on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times, only on that day. Day, did they compass the city seven times? And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The Lord has given us the city. Yeah. And then at that shout of faith. I know you normally say shout of praise, but shout of faith because of the faith they had in the Lord. And they responded to that faith and to that command, to that challenge. And they gave a shout in expectation. 
that this is what the Lord will do. At that shout of faith, that's how the walls came down and our walls are coming down. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. When you understand that this is the promise the Lord has given. And every barrier, every stumbling block, every wall of partition, every hindrance between you and the promised land, that the Lord is going to blow every wall down. This morning, it will be blown down. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. And then in verse 32, and what shall I say more? What shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. When they passed into Jericho, what's that? They were subduing Jericho and will subdue the people. We will subdue the land and the power of faith will walk in us and will not be trembling anymore. We'll march into Jericho in Jesus' name. The souls of the people there were going to win for the Lord. And all that is in there were going to convert everything to the Lord. Subduing kingdoms, regions, states, nations, countries, the continent. By faith, it will be done. And then we're told, through faith, the subdued kingdoms. And they wrought righteousness by faith, the obedience of faith. Righteousness is going to flow like a river in this church. Holiness is going to flow like a river in this church. Every wall, every barrier, every hindrance to holiness, to sanctification, all those walls, they're going to come down in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes the devil will set a barrier, will build up a great wall. And here are the people of God on this side. And then we'll say, we're looking for holiness. We're looking at holiness. We're looking at sanctification. We're looking at purity. This holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We want to go in and possess the holiness that we might live holy and righteous all the days of our life before the Lord. And then the, the devil will set a barrier. He will build a wall and the wall is very high and we preachers and pastors are wondering how are we able how are we going to be able to pull down this wall and get into the land of holiness righteousness and sanctification and then the lord is saying it's by the obedience of faith and today as we have faith in the lord all the walls the devil is building between this church and the possession of holiness all those walls are coming down and then it says by faith the wrought righteousness and then in verse 33 and they obtained promises the promises great and precious promises that by these promises he might be partakers of the divine nature the divine nature we ought to have the very nature of god the nature again is of righteousness it's of, it's of purity that nature that the lord has given us in promise there is a wall that the devil is building and that wall is so high and so thick and so deep and it's like when you preach and preach and preach and the devil said well after you're preaching have you seen the walls yes i look at the wall it's not a few days now all those walls are coming down I said all those walls are coming down. And holiness will flow like a river. And holiness will, will surround everybody and be within everybody. Everywhere we go, all the walls come down and then we march on and we possess. And then sometimes it's evangelism, a soul winning. That the souls are there and then the block is, the blockage is there, the barrier is there, the wall is there. And the devil said, uh-huh vision for evangelism and vision for soul winning and vision for harvesting now how about the walls don't worry satan the walls are coming down i said the walls are coming down we're going to evangelize this country we're going to evangelize every nation in this continent and whatever walls are there we don't care we don't mind all these walls are coming down in jesus name 
it says then that they obtained the promises and then it stopped the mouths of lions will stop the mouths of lions today is a day to move in today is a day to break the walls down to bring the walls down and as we come with the obedience of faith saying oh lord i know the sea is not just the ordinary shouting not just the ordinary shouting if it's a shout of unbelief if it's a shout of disobedience that will not bring any world down it's not just ordinary shouting it's a shouting of faith with the heart made up with the decision made that now we've heard this is the word of the lord and this is what he has said the captain of the army to tell the rest of us and we say yes lord one and all united together the same mind the same goal the same soul and the same doctrine and the same attitude we're going to bind ourselves together in a covenant of obedience and that obedience will lead to real mighty faith dynamic faith before the lord and then when such people shout unto the lord all the walls will come down why don't you stand up and we're ready first of all you commit yourself to the lord in obedience obedience if the promise is going to be fulfilled if the walls are going to come down and if we're going to move in and possess the land we need dedication before the lord consecration before the lord yieldedness before the lord circumcision of the heart all the adamic nature is dealt with and the stiff neck is dealt with and the stubbornness is dealt with and the rebellion is dealt with and all the all the things that you know built a wall between us and the possession will break all those things down will bring all those things down that is how that is how we're going to possess the time has come the time for possession that time has come the time for possession that time has come let the walls come down let the walls come down let the walls come down disobedience let it blow it down pull it down the stronghold of rebellion pull it down the stronghold of self-will pull it down and say lord here am i today i'm ready joining my heart my hand my mind my will was the will and the mind and the hands of the people of god yes lord we're ready this is a year of possession this is a year of moving in every village every town every city ask of me and i will give you the heathen for their possession I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the ends of the earth and the ends of the earth for your possession yes we're going to possess through the obedience of faith through the obedience of faith don't allow any wall to stop you the promised land the promised land of fruitfulness the promised land flowing with milk and honey the promised land of holiness and righteousness the promised land of sanctification the great and precious promises by which we become partakers of the divine nature yes we can possess this is the year of possession the promised land of fruitfulness in evangelism this is the year of possession and no wall is thick enough to stand between us and the possession no hindrance is great enough to stand between us and the possession No stronghold is mighty enough to stand between us and the possession. They lock the gates in Jericho so the people of God will not move in to possess the land. But the Lord said, See, Joshua, I've given you the land. I've given you the city of Jericho 
and the king and all the people the men of valor there i've given them to you and the lord is telling us all the people in that village i've given to you all the souls in that city i've given to you all the souls in that region local government i've given to you all the souls in that state i've given to you all the souls in that nation i've given to you don't mind the barrier don't look at the barrier don't look at the walls you pray and you plan and your planning must match your praying ask of me and i shall give you the heathen for the inheritance i will give you the heathen for your inheritance yes those idol worshippers will be converted those religious people will be converted those sudden sinners will be converted ask of me ask of me and i will give you the heathen see i've given you jericho the city jericho i've given you the stage i've given you the region i've given you that community I've given you everything for your possession. The king, the great men there, I've given to you. Ask of me. Ask of me. I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth. The uttermost parts of the earth. You shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And then to the uttermost parts of the earth. What if there is a wall between you and the uttermost parts of the earth? That's why the Lord is assuring us that the walls will fall down flat. The Lord has made a sacrifice to make us holy, to make us sanctified. What if there is a wall standing between you, a barrier between you and that holiness of sanctification? The walls will fall down flat and you will move in and possess that holiness and sanctification. The promise of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost baptism. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there comes someone after me. Mightier than I. With shoes I'm not able worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's the promise. The promise is unto you. And to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as the Lord our God shall call. How about if there is a barrier. A wall between you. And the possession of that infilling of the Holy Ghost. The walls will come down. And then you'll be able to move in and have and possess the power of the almighty God. Then you will do exploits. 
by the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost. Moving and possess. Manifest the obedience of faith. Disobedience destroys faith. Rebellion destroys faith. It's obedience that quickens our faith. It's obedience that lifts up our faith. It's obedience that increases our faith. It's obedience that gives life and dynamism to our faith. The obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. That's what brings the power. That's what brings the dynamite. That's what blows down with a great supernatural spiritual explosive. That's what blows down the wall of Jericho. Faith and courage. Faith and courage. Obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. That's what blows down the wall. The walls of Jericho. Make it a year of possession. Possession. Possessing the promises. The promise of holiness, possessing it. The promise of sanctification, possessing it. The promise of harvest of souls, possessing it. The promise of victory over temptation, possessing it. The, pros, uh, the promise of accomplishment, fulfillment in ministry, possessing it. Asking faith, believing. Don't be afraid. The walls will come down. The walls will come down. Just obey. Just obey. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey. Just obey. If a mansion fear your side, in that land beyond the sky. At a time has passed away. And your desire is to possess that glorious land. The land of promise. The land of fulfillment. The land of eternal bliss and joy and happiness. If that's your heart. To possess heaven. And to get to that land of bliss and joy. You will hear the voice of the Lord. And then it will come to you just obey. Just obey. That is the faith that will carry you into the land. Obedience of faith. It will take every barrier away from your side. The obedience of faith. And then you'll be able to possess. In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name today. 
We thank you because you've shown us the principles, the actions that will help us to break every Jericho wall before us down. Lord, we believe us in your word. And we stand on this unchanging principle of your word. Lord, we come with obedience. We come with submission. We come with consecration. Lord, every word you have spoken to us before we came and since we came, every word we ever heard since we came into the kingdom, we are promising you, Lord, we are going to obey. And Lord, at this very moment, we put our consecration submission into action. And we give you unqualified, unhindered, unrestrained, unlimited obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. By that obedience, we demonstrate our faith. Lord, we have faith in you. And we know you will not deny your word. Therefore, Lord, I pray at this very time. That all the Jericho walls between us and the possession of your promise, all those Jericho walls fall down in Jesus' name. Amen. Ours is a promise of sanctification. Ours is a promise of holiness. Ours is a promise, a precious promise, and a great promise of a divine nature. And any wall standing between us and the fulfillment of that promise. Lord, we pray right now by the obedience of faith. Oh Lord, we pray the walls will fall down in Jesus' name. You have given us the land. And you have said every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you. You said you will be with us as well with Moses and Joshua. Therefore, Lord, we accept your presence, your partnership, your power. Working in our lives. And therefore, Lord, we pray. This year is going to be a year of soul winning. A year of possessing the land. You told us to ask on behalf of Christ. The heathen for inheritance. And all the ends of the earth for our possession. Whatever walls may be standing between us. And the winning of souls. And the investing of souls. And bringing those souls into the kingdom. All those walls we command you. Fall down in Jesus name. Amen. Lord this year will be fruitful. Amen. This year souls in their multitudes will come into the kingdom. Lord, there's no belief in our hearts anymore. This work will be done. Everything will be accomplished. All the Jericho walls will come down. We'll subdue kingdoms. And we'll work righteousness. And Lord will bring many people to the knowledge, saving knowledge of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that this day, what we'll see in our midst, will be the obedience of faith. That Lord will no more accommodate, tolerate, disobedience of unbelief. But Lord in our midst, with unity, with all our hearts bound together, there will be the obedience of faith. And then there will be the fulfillment of your promises in our lives. Confirm it to Lord. In Jesus' name.